students, Mr. Murphy, and this is our last standard for quarter one. Uh, what we did in class was kind of simplified, so I'm going to expand a little bit more because we're going to need that as we go into next quarter. Solve linear equations with rational number coefficients. Like a lot of things in math, when you have a really short, simple uh, sentence, what ends up happening is it's really complicated. Uh, so let's review real quick. So you should have learned this well in seventh grade and maybe even sixth grade. Actually, you started this kind of in kindergarten. One-step equations. So the four operations of math, adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. So each of these equations is multiply here, divide here, add here, subtract here. Um, so to solve, you just do the opposite. So this equation here is 3 times what equals 27, right? You might have heard something like that in like third grade. To solve this, what you need to do is divide. So that's the opposite of multiplication. So 27 divided by 3 is 9. So the solution for this equation, 3 times what is 27, is 9. And in this equation, you're dividing. So you'd multiply by 6. Here you'd subtract 7. Here you'd add 9. Uh, and what we say is we do this on both sides of the equal sign because it keeps it equal. And also, if I subtract 7 here, the 7 disappears. And if I subtract 7 here, then I have the answer. So these are the four answers. Two-step equations, we're just taking the four operations and we're splitting them into two steps. First, we're going to do... Uh, well, when we create the equation, first we're going to multiply or divide, because that's the order of operations. Then we're going to add or subtract to get our answer. And so to work backwards, we want to first add or subtract, and then multiply or divide. You could do it the other way, but what happens is you almost always get really ugly fractions, which you don't want to work with. So, for example, in this equation, the second one, n divided by 6 plus 9 equals 3, then working it backwards would be subtract 9 on both sides. So 3 minus 9 is negative 6. 9 minus 9 is 0. So we have n divided by 6 equals negative 6. Then we'd multiply by 6 on both sides, and negative 6 times 6 is 36. Negative 6 times 6 is negative 36. Uh, and so, similarly, we solve all the other equations. Um, so those are the two basic equations. When we say with rational numbers, that just means we're adding fractions or decimals. Uh, those are rational numbers. Um, all The definition of rational numbers is basically every number you have uh, that you can make into a fraction. And if you can't make it into a fraction, it's not rational or it's not sane. We call it irrational. <clears throat> um, so here's the same basic equations. You do uh, the same thing. All right. This is a one-step equation. Two-thirds x equals 32. So to solve it, you do two-thirds x divided by two-thirds and 32 divided by two-thirds, which would be 96 over 2, which is... 46, 46, yeah. Here you would subtract 6 on both sides, subtract 9 on both sides, and then multiply by 6. Here you just divide by 4.97. Here you would add 1 fourth and then multiply by 3. Um, the other part of the standard is expanding expressions using distributive property. So the distributive property is these parentheses. And that basically means we have two of these 4x minus 9s. So we have two 4x's and two minus 9s. <clears throat> One way to get rid of these parentheses is to divide by 2. So if I divide by 2, so 2 of these 4x minus 9s divided by 2 is just 4x minus 9. 22 divided by 2 is 11. We have to do it on both sides of the equal signs to keep it equal. Now we have a simple two-step equation. We'd add 9 to both sides, so 11 and 9 is 20. Then we divide by 4. 20 divided by 4 
is 5. Okay. Um, most of the time, the um, solution of dividing by this number outside the parentheses doesn't work. Like 19 divided by 3 is 19 over 3. It's 6 and 2 thirds. It's not nice. So what we can do is distribute the 3 to both parts of the equal uh, inside the parentheses. Because we have 3 4x's, that's 3 times 4x. Because we have 3 9's, that's 3 times 9. But we keep the negative in there. Uh, and if this was a negative 3, you'd multiply by negative 3. But we don't have to do that on both sides because we're not changing anything. We're just distributing the 3 that's already there. So 3 times 4x is 12x, 3 times 9 is 27, the minus is still there. Now it's a simple two-step equation. I'd add 27 to both sides, so 27, 37, 47, so that'd be 46 divided by 12, which is a fraction in itself, but what it, um, collecting like terms is the other um, complication to this. So sometimes equations have more than one variable, more than, uh, not more than one variable. They have the same variable multiple times, or similar variables, or whatever, variables with the x variables multiple times. And we could have constants multiple times, and we could even throw in some parentheses too. Uh, so to solve this, I must really kind of combine everything together. Well, the first thing I got to do is get rid of the parentheses. So I distribute the 2 on both sides. So 2 of the 3x's is 6x. 2 of the 4's is 8. Uh, but now I, I've got an 8 minus 3 here, and that's 5. And I have 2x's here and 5x's here, so that's a total of 7x's. So I can combine those like terms. And now I need to get the x's on one side and the y's on the, and the numbers on the other. So if I add the opposite on both sides, so if I add an, the opposite of 7, which is minus 7x, and if I add the opposite of 5, which is minus 5, uh, on both sides to keep everything equal, what's going to happen is these 5s are going to disappear and these 7x's are going to disappear. And I end up with negative x equals negative 11. Uh, and oftentimes, you'll have to do one more step after this. This is a negative x, and I want to know what positive x is, so I can multiply or divide by negative 1 to on both sides to find out what positive x equals. All right, so in summary, equations can get more complicated by using parentheses and multiple terms with and without the variable and having variables on both sides of the equal sign. In these cases, we just have to use what we know about algebra and the order of operations just to simplify these equations until we have variables on one side and numbers on the other. That's it.